I next, think you have another book. This is my next yes. one, The Ink Garden of Brother Theophane, which we both love. We, we all love. I we think, love yeah, we do. It. So we do. The, the illustrations are gorgeous. Even the paper Very itself unique. is The so paper nice. itself feels yeah. good. I love that it's a, it's, it's a great rhyme. It's a great story. It introduces the kids to the Middle Ages. Right. To the, once again, about wor- it's about words. And I turn directly to, I think I've looked at these two pages so much that I literally the book turns automatically to them now. But this, at the very beginning, the, the lines, then each at his desk, they bowed their brown heads to quietly copy wise words they had read on simple brown parchment with simple brown quills, dipping simple brown ink from hollowed out wells. And then after Brother Theophane introduces them to color through his love of nature and his walks and his gathering up berries and things to make beautiful color. Then toward the end of the book, it says, where lived holy men in simple brown robes who no longer wrote their simple brown words on simple brown pages in a simple brown world. I just thought it was just beautifully done to go from all the brown yes. back to the color and the rhyme to be exactly the same. Yeah. And see, the brown matters. The, the brown <laughs> matters. Yes. It's the contrast, yes. right? Yeah. It's the contrast of yeah. being drab and consistent and boring and then you know, the wonder of color. Yeah, the yeah. wonder of color. That's right. Well, and all the little... You see how, <laughs> how she segued that? Yes, it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Are there numbers in there? There are. I think I think uh, they even count out how many... They may, maybe they don't. But I don't. even all of the little aside so you have the the main poem yes, have, but then you have these little poetic right, asides right. that creatively are from the hand of brother theophane yeah but if you read the his, back his, like his journal that his journal you 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 read that actually these were inspired by real life poems and marginal notes and scribbles that these monks had in their in their actual right and that's just a delightful bit of history that it you is. have no you may not know that sometimes the monks that as they're copying things out got bored and Doodle. wrote about a cat right <laughs> or just suddenly had an epiphany about how beautiful the land was right and some and of those he, little poems are gorgeous they are yeah. and his love of land mm-hmm. love of nature you know when everybody else is sitting there in their brown robes with their brown right. ink and he's looking at the bright colored yeah. bird on the window i mean it's all just beautiful and i think rereading this i think we should read this in the fifth grade. When we do yes. Adam of the Road. It's you almost should. identical. You it's should. the beginning of Adam of the Road. Yes, we should yeah. always go back to some of these picture books right. and read them to older students right. to remind them right. that you've already had this experience with the Middle Ages. Right. Hello, everyone. Ian here. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Novel Thoughts. This show only happens with your support, and that means the world to us. If you don't know already, all the books we talk about on Novel Thoughts are available on our website at memoriapress.com, along with a ton of other great resources for homeschool families looking for great literature for their homes and classrooms. Thanks for being here. Now let's get back to the episode. Which then leads us to St. Francis and the Wolf. St. Francis and the Wolf is a great story. Yes. We love the pictures. Um, what would you like to say about St. Francis and the Wolf? Well, it's just a beautiful story. about. And again, you know, we were talking um, yesterday, I think, about the the need for students to recognize. And it's it, it is going to be more prevalent in first grade than it was in kindergarten. Dangerous animals, dan- you know, things that could be danger. And that they have to be careful. But the great thing about this book is the dangerous wolf really is just hungry. And he befriends, you know, he befriends the town with the help of St. Francis, who does tame him. And so he befriends the town and they all live happily ever after. But we have introduced the concept of danger. Talking about themes in books. I mean, classic authors use particular language, right? And so wolves, um, sneaky foxes, dragons. Um, and so the modern, you know, I guess, creative yes. perspective on yes, this sometimes right. distorts what a classical idea about these things are. And so the wolf was a threat. I mean, no, to, he was. to discount the threat is not call. a realistic way to approach right. that. So it was really St. Francis's kindness mm-hmm. and his relationship with the wolf that sort of changed the threat 
to a friendship. We do have to be alert to things that, um, you know, are, are threats. Um, and so the sneaky fox, I mean, that's a theme. And it, even in, in um, Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, isn't Mog, Mogram, Mog, is it? Yeah. It, it's a, a wolf, right? A wolf. Right, right. And so, uh, you know, so we can see, right. So you can exist. see, like, yeah. in especially in Narnia, um, the animals, I think, are very representative of classical ideas about, you that's know, right. and it's symbolism. I mean, it's symbolism. And so that's what, you know, we just want the student to recognize that, yeah, this is a wolf, but not any animal would do, you know? That's you, right. You, it, so, well, and uh, the, and the townspeople, yeah. they call St. Francis foolish. And, and we know that he's the hero of the story. So in our minds, it's kind of easy to think, well, they're just grumbling. They're just complaining about it. But that, that's true. He's doing something that seems foolish. And we should, we should, lean into that and talk about it. It takes courage to confront the wolf, but also the wolf is a dangerous thing. It's not just this tame animal that anybody can go. And so there's something more than just humility and kindness going on. There's almost kind of an inspiration. There's a, I think, yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a, that's right. That's right. This is a miraculous sort of inner. That's exactly right. Yeah, right. Exactly. In a book like this, you don't want to tell your (laughs) <laughs> kindergartner that's exactly right you know go, uh, go find a wolf that's right Famous. so right yeah. and so i mean right saint francis is a saint right yeah. i mean so that's what's happening here um so i do think you know acknowledging threats um and not discounting them but but more than anything just recognizing the symbolism um in this literature in very easy age-appropriate ways right the fox in Dr. DeSoto is, you know, he's outsmarted by the little mouse but the thing about this book to me more than anything is that is his compassion knowing that he was putting himself in danger, but also not wanting the fox to have a toothache right? <laughs> and to be in pain. Right. And so, you know, just that courage that it took for him to get in that fox's mouth. And then, it, you know, it's funny, too, because he does outsmart him by gluing his jaws together. So there's no way he can eat him before he's gone. Right. And and the instinct, the fox's instinct to eat right. him, even though he's thankful. Right. That he helped him right. and he's not in pain anymore. And he tried not to want to eat the, the That's little right. mouse. Right. right. But he, oh, I, it's another mouse. It's, it's an, you did a mouse. Love, I'm telling it you. is a the mouse. Mice, theme. Mouse, mice, mice, first um, grade. But it's Lassie. I mean, this is like a great book to sort of recall when you're going through Lassie. I mean, in Lassie's instinct, instinct to get home, mm-hmm. you know, which is, I mean, that's a, that's a whole, you know, new opportunity to talk about. But, um, you know, these animal instincts are, um, uh, a, 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 even in Charlotte's Web, you know, Wilbur's instincts to, what does he do? Like root through the mud yes. or, you know, and all the animals have their particular right. characteristics, which, you know, points to the individuality of things. I mean, which points to, you know, what is special about individual things. And all of the, a lot of these books have sort of that undercurrent too, like the uniqueness of an individual animal or person and yet their relationship with a community at large. I mean, that's Miss Miss Twiggly. Right, right, yes. Right. Right. Yes. right, right, right. Yeah. So, you know, not discounting the individuality, exalting individuality, but also recognizing, you know, that the place. Well, yes. and and again, we don't want to, we don't want to tell first graders, we don't want to use philosophical language like no. essence no. and things like this. <laughs> no, but, but that's that is, what we're getting. We're getting that right. a fox like, is a right. fox. Aristotle, that, right. That, that, right. That, that, that humble mice are humble mice. You yes. Know? And right. that everything is uniquely made. We're yes. also getting to that, that each, each thing is uniquely made with its own unique God-given purpose. Snowflake <laughs> Bentley. <that's right. laughs> yes. Yeah, every snowflake is uniquely made. Sure. But, but Snowflake Bentley, you know, he dedicated his life to... Um, per, he well, he says to providing beauty um, through his photography, but he also, you know, figured out that that every snowflake is different. And when I reread, I always liked this book, but when I reread it, I was really struck by how many times he failed before he so there's a person ever succeeded. Yeah. There is absolute perseverance in here. But yes, uniquely made. He did not follow the path anybody wanted him to follow. But he um, contributed. And Miss Twickley is uniquely made. You know, she's reserved. She and, sleeps in her hat. I mean, you know. <laughs> she sleeps stairs. in her hat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 